Hello class, welcome to another exciting adventure of CIS 2353, which is data structures in Java. We have week 9 uh, this week, so we're going uh, through binary trees. So that also covers chapter 9. Um, you'll note that there is a week 8 folder on D2L, but it is empty. Um, that's just to remain consistent with the week numbering on the left here for the syllabus. Uh, you will also note that there will be likely an empty folder for week 13, uh, Thanksgiving recess. So unless I choose to upload maybe some supplemental material or something like that, there won't be anything there. Um, if you are joining us for the 2015 fall, uh, then you will have your program 2 assigned. Otherwise, please look at your current syllabus um, to see what exciting adventures await you. So, let's get started with binary trees, chapter 9. So we've got chapter 9 here. Which uh, does have quite a few slides, but I think many of them are uh, basically example-based. So, uh, this chapter consists largely of uh, some theoretical concepts and also uh, applied concepts that you can uh, go through uh, on paper or with special software, um, but most of this is uh, conceptual in nature. Uh, we don't start the actual implementation, um, I believe, until the binary search trees, which are coming up in, a subs in the subsequent chapter. But we have to understand what are binary trees in general. Um, so here's an example. This is a here are some binary trees we will be studying in the next few chapters. You've got the uh, binary tree, a binary search tree, which uh, there are different types also based off of that, uh, such as the Allison Velsky Landis tree and the red black tree. But there's other types of uh, binary trees as well. There's something called the heap decision tree, a Huffman tree, an expression tree. So we'll cover a lot of these uh, within the next uh, couple chapters. Um, and then uh, I believe chapter 15 rounds it out on graphs and uh, trees in general, so that may have um, several of these trees in it as well. But we have to understand what is a binary tree in general. So it is a data structure, um, but it's not one that is uh, pre-implemented for us, at least in the Java Collection Framework. Um, we have the situation that there are many, many different implementations, different expected uh, methods that come from the binary tree. Uh, so um, they haven't provided a uh, direct implementation or we're not going through a direct implementation at least for generic binary trees. So the binary tree though, uh, what is it? It's non-linear. We've basically been um, focusing on linear structures in the past few chapters. So we've had the uh, linked structures, we've looked at the linked list and array list, um, and a bunch of different structures that basically are based on, or they're fundamentally based on elements following one another um, in one way or the other, but they don't really branch out in different uh, sets of elements. Binary tree on the other way is non-linear. So a binary tree that we'll call T, okay, so T is just basically, we can think of it as a variable name or a name for any generic binary tree. But in order to be called a binary tree, it has to be either empty, meaning it has nothing in it, okay, you'll see blank paper in front of you, um, or it consists of an element called the root and two distinct binary trees called the left subtree and right subtree of T. Now note that since a binary tree in and of itself um, can be empty, that means the root element could have an empty left tree and an empty right subtree. So that means that it would just be the root element by itself. Notice that this definition is inherently recursive because you define a binary tree based on two other binary trees. Um, this all has to do with the left and right of the root. And then you consider these subtrees as, their, as a tree in their own right. Okay, so here's an example. It's binary because um, each of these nodes here, okay, this one's the root, um, this one right here, this one right there, etc. These are all different um, nodes in the tree. Each of them can have at most 
two children. Okay, so we would call albatross the child of the cat node, and then frog is the child of the cat node. We would say that dog and turtle are the children of the frog node, and that turtle has one uh, child node named horse. We would say that turtle is horse's parent, um, frog is dog's parent, frog is turtle's parent, cat is turtle's grandparent. So these are the way you would you usually use uh, familial associations in order to describe the relationships among the elements that live in the binary tree. But note the primary thing we have to focus on with a general binary tree, any binary tree, uh, in fact even the specializations we'll take a look at later, um, in later chapters, is that the binary tree, each node can have at most two children. Okay, They may have no children, like the albatross here, has no children. Uh, they may have one child, like turtle here has one child, or they could have two, like cat has two children. Those two left subtrees are written as left tree of t and right tree of t. Um, this is using what's called functional notation instead of object uh, or object method notation, such as t.left tree, because there will be no binary tree class or interface involved here. You're saying that you're passing this generic thing we're calling a tree to a method that will act upon it, but it is not a method of um, the tree itself. So why is there no binary tree class? It would not be flexible enough for the binary tree based classes already in the Java Collections framework. So there's one called tree map, for example, and tree set, not to mention the priority queue, which is discussed in chapter 13. That's implemented with a tree structure as well. Um, there's a lot of botanical um, terminology that is used, arboreal terminology that is used extensively with trees. Um, besides root, which is the element at the very top of the tree, um, and the term tree, we also have the term leaf, and, which is the element whose left and right subtrees are empty, meaning it has no children. And then there's branch, which is a line drawn from an element to its left or right subtree. This is one type of tree called an expression tree. Each leaf is an operand, and each non-leaf is a binary operator. This is a binary search tree, which we'll cover more extensively uh, next chapter. Each element in the left subtree of any given element is less than the root element, and each element in the right subtree uh, is greater than the root element and the left and right subtrees are themselves binary search trees. So if you look at this, 50, anything on this side, on the left, will be smaller than 50, and anything on the right will be larger than 50. It's just how it's going to work. Now if we consider the left subtree of this 50, which is the root of our overall tree, if you look and zoom in on this and forget that there's even a rest of the tree over here, this itself is also a binary search tree, because if we consider 30, 30 has a number to its left, which is 12, that is smaller than 30, and then anything to the right is larger. So we have 40 over here. Can you create a binary tree of just three elements, such that each element in the left subtree is less than the root element, and each element in the right subtree is greater than the root element, but the binary tree is not a binary search tree? The hint is one of the subtrees will be empty. So you could uh, do that as an exercise on your own. So here's another binary search tree. This one's not very good um, in this case because um, it ends up um, being basically devolving into a linear uh, uh, structure. So you'd basically have to search through each item if you want to find the ultimate uh, number that you're looking for. However, um, in general, if you keep a well-balanced uh, binary search tree where the levels of each of the nodes, okay, the, basically the depth down through here, um, are at approximately the same level, it's actually faster to find items than it would be for a linear search. Suppose a binary tree T is a chain. That is, each element except the only uh, leaf has exactly one branch going down from it, like we just saw. So this is a chain. Uh, if t has n elements, how many branches are there from the root to the only leaf? 
So if you have four elements, one, two, three, four, five, or I'm sorry, five elements, including the root, one, two, three, four, five, you have one, two, three, four um, branches. How can we define leaves, which is the number of leaves in a binary tree that we call T? You can do it recursively. So the simplest case is when uh, T is empty. The other simple case is when T has only one element. Otherwise, the number of leaves in T is, uh, in, is defined in terms of the number of leaves, uh, leaves in the left plus the right. So right here we have a, kind of a mathematical definition here. If the tree is empty, then we know that there's no leaves on it, period. Um, if T consists of just the root, then the root is also a leaf because it has no children. So that's only one element in the entire tree. So one leaf, too. But otherwise, we define the leaves as the leaves of the left subtree uh, plus the leaves of the right subtree. Now, the reason we don't have to add uh, an extra one in here, if you're thinking, well, where did the root go? What if, you know, it's there and it has a, uh, you know, left subtree and a right subtree? Well, think about what we're saying. Um, if it has either uh, a left or a right subtree, that means that it has failed the first two conditions then that means it can't be a leaf itself. So then you have to count the leaves of the left and the right subtrees. What about n of t? This is the number of elements or number of nodes in the entire tree. So think about how you would define that. So if t is empty, think about how many leaves, or I mean sorry, how many nodes would you have? Okay, how many nodes would you have in total? If the entire tree is empty, then you would have zero nodes, correct? If it's not empty, meaning that the tree has some sort of node, at least the root, then you would say that n of t equals 1 plus the number of elements in the left subtree plus the number of elements in the right. This time you would add 1 to it because you are counting the root of a given subtree or of a given tree. Uh, the familial terminology, um, I gave you a hint of this earlier. You would say 40 is the left child of 50. Uh, 50 is the parent of 40, so that's how they're related. You'd say 50 is also a parent of 70. 70 would be the um, right child of 50. Um, 50 is the parent of 70. 40 and 70 are siblings because they are straight off, straight across from one another. You can have at most one sibling. Um, what is 91 to 50? 91 would be the uh, right child of the right child of 50. We would also say it is a descendant of 50, or you could also say it's the um, grandchild of 50, but it's the right child of the right child. What about 91 to 48? 91 to 48, um, you could say that they are cousins. That's one terminology you'll occasionally hear uh, used to describe those that have um, each of their parents are siblings. So it's just like in a family tree, these, are, these two are cousins. So x is an ancestor of y if x is the parent of y or if x is an ancestor of think about it. A path in a binary tree is a sequence of elements in which each element except the last is the parent of the next element in the sequence. So that's how we describe a path. A path, again, in a binary tree is a sequence of elements in which each element except the last is the parent of the next element in the sequence. Okay, so let's look at the definition again. Path in a binary tree is a sequence of elements in which each element, except the last, is the parent of the next element in the sequence. Okay, so determine the path from 50 to 84. I want to go from 50 to 84, I would say that the path is 50, 80, 90, 84. 50, 80, 90, 84. 
We also defined the height of a tree. So we've got terms like level, depth, level and depth are the same. And then we have the term height. We'll talk about height first here. Uh, the height of the tree is the number of branches from the root to the farthest leaf. You can also start counting the root as zero and then just say zero, one, two, three. So the height of this, you could also say is the number of branches, one, two, three. 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can do it either way. You can count the branches directly, or you can start at 0 at the root and then go down to the farthest leaf. Now, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be more than one leaf at the same level. The height just happens to be the farthest leaf, okay, so, or the one with the highest, what we'd call the greatest depth or the highest uh, level. What about this one? Well, we have 1, 2. Okay, you can say 0, 1, Two. So these are the lowest leaves, so that we would say the height of this tree is 2. What's the height of this one? Well, you have 1, because there's both of these are at the same level, the 80 and the 30. Um, this happens to be a binary search tree also, not just a binary tree, but that doesn't really matter. The height is unaffected by the type of binary tree. We just know <clears throat> that the height of this particular tree is 1. You could count the nodes, 0, 1 or you can count just the branch, one. What's the height of this? Well, there's no branches, so it's zero. Or since we've always counted the root as zero, then you just say it's zero. Um, if it's an empty tree, just by the way, as a note, if you have a tree that's completely empty, it has no root or anything, you say the height is negative one. What is the height of a tree if the height of the left subtree is four and the height of the right subtree is 10? So think about that one as well. Think about which one is greater. If a binary tree has height 0, its left and right subtrees much, must each uh, have a height of 1. That's because they're empty. They have to be completely empty. Um, the actual formula that you have is if t, if the tree itself that you're considering, or it could be a subtree, right, because this is a tree is a recursive structure, if t is empty, the height is negative 1. Otherwise, what does the height equal? Think about what the height would equal. You would add, you would take 1 and then add it to the maximum of whatever the height of the left and right subtree are, correct? So you take 1 plus max of the height of the left subtree plus the, or comma, the height of the right subtree. So whichever one's bigger, you basically add 1 to that, and that's your height. So if you have just a root there, um, that means it has no children. So we would say that its left subtree has a height of negative 1 because it, the left subtree is empty. The height of the right subtree is also empty, so it's negative 1. The max of negative 1 and negative 1, since they're the same, it's negative 1. To get the height, remember the equation is 1 plus the max of the left and right subtree's heights, whichever one's the largest. They're both the same, so you get 1 plus negative 1, and that equals 0. So that's how we can define a tree with one element as having height 0. The depth, um, also known as the level, um, is the number of branches from the root element to x. So that may sound insanely similar to the height. Um, but you should note that it is essentially, the height would be the largest depth. Okay, so the whatever leaf you can find that has the greatest depth, that is the height of the tree. But in general, we would say that the depth is uh, 0 if x is the root element. But otherwise, it's 1 plus the uh, level of the parent of x. So the depth of any given element that you're looking at, you can go down the tree, you can say it's 1 plus whatever the level of the parent is, okay, or the depth of the parent. So that basically is another recursive definition. In the following binary tree, what is the depth of 62? The depth of 62 we would say is 0, 1, 2. So the depth is 2. What about the level of 90? 
Hmm, well, what does level mean? Level's the same as depth. So you would say it's 1, 2, 3. The height of 50's left subtree. So the left subtree, remember that the height is basically the largest depth on the left subtree of 50. So we'd say since there's only one element there, we would say that the height is 1, 0, 1. The height of the subtree rooted at 90, you would say it is 0, 1, 2. So 90 is there. The height of the subtree, well, if you're talking, I guess, of the subtree rooted at 90, if you consider that the root, then the height of the subtree is only 1 of that subtree. But if you're talking about where is 90, then we say that's 1, 0, 1, 2. Another definition is a binary tree is a two tree. It's called a two tree if T, the tree, is empty, that's one possibility, or if each non-leaf, meaning it's an intermediate node, it's a node that has at least one child, that's a non-leaf, in the in T has two branches. So each non-leaf has to have uh, two children. If it's not a leaf, it has to have two children. So here's an example of a two tree. It's a two tree because now you might look at C and say, well, well, you know, that doesn't have two children. Well, it's a leaf, so that's okay. Same thing with D. But anything that's an intermediate node or the root, root has two children. This B is an intermediate node because it's not a leaf, so it has two children. E is an intermediate node because it's not a leaf, so it has F and G. That's also two children. If we were missing G here, for example, this would no longer be a two tree. Or if we were missing the D, that would no longer be a two tree. Or if we miss the C, that would no longer be a two tree. Um, your question here is, is this a two tree? So consider this for a couple minutes. Try to determine if this is a two tree. Remember the definition? Binary tree is a two tree if T is empty, because that tree is obviously not empty. So, or if each non-leaf has two branches. Well, let's look at it. Does A have two branches? Yes. C is a leaf, so we don't need to worry about that. Oops, sorry. A, <laughs> a is the root. It has B and C as its children. S B has two children, which is okay, because it's intermediate. D has G and H. G and H are leaves. I and J are leaves. E has two children. Okay, looking good so far. Uh, what about C, though? Uh-oh, C's only got one child. It does not have a child on this side. So even though F has two children, uh, this whole thing is not a two tree. We could say that the subtree over here, uh, rooted at B, is a two tree, but the overall structure here is not a two tree. So a binary tree T is a two tree if T has at most one element, or if the left tree of T and the right tree of T are non-empty two trees as well. Okay, so we've defined two tree. A binary tree T is full if that tree is a two tree and all of the leaves of T have the same depth. Okay, so here's a full binary tree. Notice it is a two tree because each of the intermediate nodes has two children and all of the leaves are at the same depth. So that's a full tree. So we would recursively say that the binary tree T is full if T is empty or if the height of the left tree is equal to the height of the right tree. And both the left tree T and right tree T are also full. So it's recursively uh, defined. Another definition, a binary tree T is complete if it is full through a depth of height minus 1, and each leaf whose depth is height of T, meaning the full height, is as far to the left as possible. Okay, so here's an example of a complete binary tree. It is not full. We would not say the whole thing is full. Um, it, is a t uh, it is not necessarily a, a two tree, even, um, but it is a complete binary tree because um, it is full up to 
um, the h minus 1 level. So this is the height down here. So this is the height minus 1. So we would say if we disregard this stuff down here, then we would say it is a full tree. But then we would say that all of the children are left as far as possible um, in the tree over here. So we know that that is, in fact, a complete tree. This one is not because you'll notice that at the level h minus 1 over here, it is not full because C is missing a child. If C had a child here, then this whole thing would be a complete tree. With each element in a complete binary tree, we associate a non-negative integer as follows. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can um, describe a complete tree st and store it in an array um, such that the first element is the uh, root, and then you'll note that the root's children are B and C, and if you look at B, the, B's children are D and E, C's children are R and S, um, D's children are F and G, and then E's child is L. Okay, right, E's child is L. So you see that that is one way to store a binary tree. You can actually do it with just an array. It doesn't have to look like an array, uh, a tree or have links like you would expect maybe a linked list to have in memory in order for it to uh, work. The random access property of arrays allows quick access of parent from child and from child to parent. So, um, it is efficient to store a complete binary tree in an array. Can a complete binary tree be stored in an array list? Of course it can because it uh, is the same idea as for an array. What about a linked list? Well, not a good idea because a linked list um, is not random access and it stores elements in a linear fashion and it's not a linear structure. So you could finagle it to do some things that kind of work but it would not be good. Okay, You should know about the binary tree theorem. For any non-empty binary tree T, you have that the leaves, the number of leaves in that tree has to be uh, less than or equal to the number of total elements plus 1 divided by 2.0. Also, another thing that you can glean from this is that the number of elements plus 1 divided by 2, which you see over here, um, is less than or equal to 2 to the height of t. So, exponentiation. Also, equality holds in part 1 if and only if t is a 2 tree. So if t is a true 2 tree, then this right here is true. Equality holds in part 2 if and only if the tree is full. Okay, so a full tree has a height that is logarithmic in n. The height of a complete binary tree is also logarithmic in n. Uh, in n. So the worst case scenario is that you have a chain and it will be uh, linear. In chapter 10, the next chapter, we look at the binary search tree. So here's an example of a binary search tree. We already described it, that all the children of any given node, um, the left children are all less than that node and the right children are all greater than that node and that is recursively defined as well. In a binary search tree, each element in the left subtree is less than the root, and each element in the right subtree is greater than the root element, and the left and right subtrees are binary search trees. Right? You should see a pattern here where there's a lot of recursive definition going on here. Um, in the binary search tree class, the average height of the binary search tree object is logarithmic in n. So the average time to insert, remove, or search is logarithmic in n. So that makes these uh, extremely fast. But a binary search tree object can be a chain, so that's the worst case. Uh, we're talking average over here where it's logarithmic, but down here the worst case is linear in n. So basically you've degraded a tree uh, down to a linear or linked list. For an unsorted array, array list or linked list collection, the time to insert, remove, or search is linear in n. So you should see that the binary search tree is actually very, very important um, because just using an array list or just using a linked list collection as is 
if they're not sorted, then the time to insert, remove, or search is linear. So that's actually that's worse than logarithmic. Um, another thing you should be aware of is something called the external path length. Length. So we've talked about the uh, binary tree theorem uh, just a second ago. Now we're talking about the external path length. Let T be a non-empty binary tree. We define the external path length of T, E of T, um, to be the sum of the depths of all the leaves. For example, find the external path length of the following tree. If we look at this one and we look at all the leaves, we want to add up what? The sum of the depths, or the sum of the levels, of all the leaves. So we've got one, two, three, four, five leaves. So right here you've got zero, one, two, three, three, and three, so that equals nine if we add those. Those are the depths, so nine to those. And then uh, one, two, and two, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And that's what we get. This is the external path length theorem. Let t be a binary tree with k greater than zero leaves. So it has some number of leaves we're calling k, and it has to be greater than zero. Then we say that the external path length is greater than or equal to k divided by two multiplied by the floor of log base two of k. So we say that the uh, log of k is a lower bound of the external path length. This result is used in a later chapter when we establish a lower bound for sorting algorithms. Okay, we'll take a look at that later on. Um, the last topic, or the last primary topic we will discuss, is called traversals. Traversals basically mean um, any traversal is an algorithm, so that means it's a set of instructions um, that accesses each element in the binary tree. The following traversal algorithms are not methods because we have not and will not define a binary tree class, but we will traverse other types of trees as well. So in order, now if you need to remember, there, there are four types that they discuss in here. There's in order, pre-order, post-order, and one they call breadth first, okay, or breadth based. Um, the in order, if you have to remember which one's which, in order, pre order, and post order, when we say something's in or left or pre, I'm sorry, in or pre or post, you have to think about uh, where the root is. So in in order, that means that the root is in the center of these. So you would do the left subtree first. Now this is recursive again, so left subtree, uh, root, right subtree. That's exactly what it says. As long as this is an empty, that's the that would be the base case essentially. Um, you have, um, or the base case would be if t is empty. So if you ever get to a leaf, then you can stop. Um, the in order traversal, meaning um, you're processing the the elements. So what do we mean by process? Well, it can mean print, it can mean add it to something, it can mean add it to another list, it can mean send it over the internet, just processing it, doing something with it, okay? Um, so traversal's involved in that. So you call the in order of the left first, then you process the root, then you call the um, uh, traversal of the right tree, okay? If we want to determine the element in order for this tree right here, uh, remember the in order means that we have um, left, root, and then right. So we look at the root here. We can't process it yet because we haven't done the left yet. We go down here to the left. Well, this is also a root of a subtree, so we can't do anything because it's not the left. This is a left. It's, in, uh, it's children are empty, so we process. We have 12 then root, 30, then right subtree, 40. So 12, 30, 40. Okay, and then since we've processed this left subtree, we have the root. So um, 12, 30, 40, 50, 86, uh, 90, 100. 12, 30, 40, 50, 86, 90, 100. Post order means that the root is handled last. So determine the order in which the elements would be processed during a post-order traversal. So post-order order, order means left, right, root. So left, x, y, minus, z, a, b, asterisk, 
division plus. So this is pretty um, intense. Some of this can take a little bit of getting used to, but this is how, uh, for any of you who had my uh, Java 2 course and we did the postfix calculator, this is exactly, um, or it's a very similar process, right? So pre-order means the root gets processed first, then the left, then the right. So here, in pre-order traversal, we would have plus, and go down here, minus, plus, minus, x, y, divide, z, multiply, a, b. All right, so there's your prefix. What about breadth first? Well, breadth first is actually probably the easiest, because you actually, as far as like looking at it, because you just basically start at the top, then get its children, then that children, then that children. You basically read it from the top to left to right, just like we do in English. So that's very, very similar to what we're used to. So I would say A, B, C, D, E, R, S, F, G, L, right, F, G, L. That's breadth first. So um, for practice, I would highly recommend you go through the in order, post order, and pre order. You never know if, I don't know, if you get an assignment or something that requires you to do these. You might want to consider these uh, very carefully. So, in order, post order, and pre order. Uh, breadth first is just really easy, right? So, A, B, C, D, E, R, S, F, G, L, right? So, remember, but remember these are recursively defined. So, for, for example, for in order, if I say left, root, right, I could start at the root and say, well, I can't process it yet because I haven't done the left first. So I go down to the left, but remember, this is a root of another subtree. Well, oops, I can't process this because that's a root. Oops, can't process that because that's a root. Um, this one ends up being a leaf. It is the left. Then I process the root, then the right, and then you recursively have performed that on the left subtree. So then the root, B, then here, remember? We can't do the root yet, because this is the new root, E is the new root, so you have to do L first, L, E. Then um, A, because it roots in the middle. Then you do the right subtree. So um, this is something that it takes a little bit of practice, but they've got good examples in the book, and actually the set of slides is not so bad either. So um, that's pretty much it for this week. If you have any questions, please email me at jpbaugh at oaklandcc.edu. Thanks, and have a great day.